uh, and, and uh, to change the temperature and the interface. And even if R is very large, then I will have a, a huge impact uh, of that. So the you can work, you can follow uh, the, the development I have introduced for uh, the uh, local non-equilibrium model or the local equilibrium model. You can do you can do almost the same stuff. The only the only thing that will change is that you will have all the time are the boundary condition for the closure problems uh, and things like that. So the the result is that. Uh, I have essentially similar macroscale equations, but with an uh, additional ingredient in the uh, in the closure problems where I will have this uh, um, contact resistance that plays on. Uh, if you have um, R that goes to infinity, then basically the two equation model that will give an H equal to zero, and therefore I will have two independent equations. So it's easier to have non-equilibrium situation if you have a contact resistance than if you have none, which makes sense. The, the, each resistance tends to separate the, the two phases uh, in, in, in the system. Uh, to illustrate that, let us look at the uh, uh, heat exchange coefficient versus the ratio of the thermal conductivity of the beta phase and the sigma phase. And uh, R is some uh, uh, dimensionless uh, expression for, the, uh, for the, uh, the, 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 the coefficient. So in terms of uh, uh, <coughs> for a given uh, heat resistance, I have this, the H that uh, changes uh, like that. So something uh, we already have seen uh, previously. And now, if I take uh, uh, a single value, let's take, for instance, something uh, uh, near this plateau here, and I look at the impact of R. I have the following. So if R becomes very, very big, H ten, tends to zero. This is uh, something uh, we expect. And in that case, we almost all the time will have non-equilibrium. And this might be very important for the um, application I worked on uh, for this particular problem was the uh, heat transfer and composite material. Uh, and, and if you have delaminated uh, composite, uh, composite, for instance, because some stress, uh, mechanical stress on the system or uh, some uh, process uh, uh, manufacturing uh, defect, uh, then you, you will have, uh, R will, uh, <coughs> will, uh, will increase and you will, your, the thermal behavior of your composite material will become very, very bad. On the contrary, uh, uh, I, I, I have this particular uh, situation. So if R becomes to zero, then I essentially get the normal two equation uh, solution. The, the heat resistance uh, that triggers the, uh, the need for a two equation model does not come from the, the, heat, uh, the, interf the heat barrier. Uh, the impact on, on K uh, it's not uh, really not very important. So it, so it works relatively well. Uh, this is a, a numerical simulation. Uh, so the, those uh, are the average uh, temperature obtained from the DNS. So I took a single unit cell volume, so it's not completely smooth, but it gives the, the trend for the average value. And you see that without any tweaking of parameters, the closure problems, Gives, gives a relatively good prediction of the, of, of the field. And if you compare that uh, with measurements, for instance, uh, you have, uh, you have uh, the following uh, feature. So it's quite complicated. I'm just going to comment on, on, a, few, on a few things. Uh, so these are uh, the uh, power scale parameters. And these are the, uh, well, we just look at the, uh, it's very difficult, you don't find a lot of uh, two equation uh, parameters measurements in the literature. So we were able only to compare for in the case of local equilibrium. There are not many people that look at that, except for some particular application, and in particular one coming from the aerospace uh, uh, application.
application and will comment uh, later. But for most of the uh, material science uh, uh, in classical composite material, people uh, essentially look at local equilibrium situation. So you see that uh, here, uh, and this is the, pre the, the theoretical prediction here. So it works relatively well. Um, you are never happy with the uh, differences you see, but they are not, they are not very, very large. But it's very difficult to, uh, for instance, here, uh, people that put uh, four significant digits in uh, measurement of thermal conductivity, in, uh, I have doubts. I spent uh, my, uh, when I was young as a researcher, and spent a lot of time trying to measure correctly uh, thermal conductivity. So I don't think we, it's easy to get that four digit uh, accuracy. So that's one application. Another application which is very important is what's happening if I, have, if I have the generation of heat inside the material. And there are many, many, many applications which uh, uh, are associated to this particular problem. I will only give two examples. The uh, first one is uh, in nuclear safety application, for instance. You have heat which is generated in the solid phase when you have a debris bed in, uh, in the framework of a nuclear accident. So you have a, you have a huge uh, source term in the, in, the, in the solid phase. The temperature will rise, rise and eventually you will have uh, boiling, uh, fusion uh, of the solid phase and so forth. So you need to understand that. This is an example. And uh, I, I've done some work on the flow of superfluid helium in, in uh, large hadron colliders. And you know that in these colliders, uh, you have magnets, and they are essentially made of uh, uh, some sort of coarse material uh, in some places. And if you have a and, uh, and, and, uh, beam in the collider, it's not exactly, it does not follow, the, 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 there are always some reflection, things like that. So there is some heat which can uh, be generated in, in, the, in, in the system. And if you uh, are not able to predict the behavior of the system in, in that case, you may have accident. For instance, the LHC in, in, uh, in Geneva uh, had a very uh, uh, impressive accident. One, more than one kilometer magnets were lost uh, because they, they jumped uh, into a, a, a system, they are not, a situation they are not predicted. Uh, and and uh, the problem is that it, it is cooled using superfluid helium. And the superfluid helium uh, loses its superfluidity at two point one uh, degree Kelvin. So if you increase a little bit, you, you start with a normal air, the temperature is about 1.8, 1.9. But if you increase a little bit, then you don't have uh, superfluid uh, anymore, so there is, uh, there is no cooling, and, it, and that's why it exploded. So this situation is, is not a, an academic situation. It does uh, have some importance in many, many applications. And I have two types of, of uh, heterogeneous sources. Uh, I have homogeneous sources because, for instance, of nuclear uh, of uh, radioactive uh, decay, and I may have uh, heterogeneous sources. It generate through some combustion, for instance, or, or magnetic induction at the interface between the two phases. So this is uh, the black uh, stuff is what we have studied so far, and now we have an additional ingredient, which is uh, which are those uh, those free uh, free systems. Well, it's uh, <coughs> so I have a couple, uh, I, I can work out again all those uh, equations. So for the bulk equation, well, the homogeneous thermal sources, they just appear as averages. So not a big deal, there is no, uh, no problem. I have a, a phi uh, and I just average phi and I have the source term in the macro scale equation. Simple. Well, this is not straightforward for the heterogeneous sources. The heterogeneous sources is generated at the interface. So, but I don't have interface in the, in the macro scale equations. The only thing I have is that <coughs> I have uh, some uh, interfacial flux here. So I know that some flux is coming in my macro scale beta phase from this heterogeneous sources. Source. But which part? I have uh, <coughs> some average of omega, but I have to distribute that in the macro scale beta phase equation and in the micro in, in the macro scale sigma phase equation. In the engineering, uh, people they essentially put if they use a local non-equivalent system, they put that entirely 
in the phase, in the solid phase. That was traditional. Uh, nobody cared about uh, the reason for that. So it, it was traditional engineering practice. Well, it turns out that it's not, it, it works in some cases, but not all the time. And this is what we will, we will see and understand from, from the, uh, the point of view of the, um, of the averaging uh, technique. So, uh, for the power scale deviation, uh, I have uh, the traditional sources, and I have an additional one that comes from the heterogeneous sources. It's a long story, uh, but uh, uh, so I, we, you can develop the, the seven or eight uh, model I have uh, discussed before. I will only comment on two. The first one is the local equilibrium case, not the simplest case. In the local equilibrium case, there are no longer sources besides this one. And the macro scale equation is just the dispersion equation I had before plus those averages. Simple averages here, here, and here. This is correct. I have the uh, average of omega over the interface times the specific area. This is correct. So here, no problem. Uh, and the, it turns out that the closure problem does not depend on omega and so forth. So this is the same model I have uh, uh, presented before. Uh, now it's a little bit more involved for the, for the non-equilibrium model. So I have the same closure plus an additional stuff here uh, that will be used to uh, <coughs> distribute the heterogeneous source between the two macroscale equations. So the macroscale equations, they look like the same as before plus the uh, average of homogeneous sources. Same, uh, well, uh, same for the sigma phase. And then omega is distributed between the two equations uh, with a distribution coefficient but that essentially depends on the closure problems associated to this mapping scalar. That's, uh, that's the main feature of, of the system. And I have just time to finish that. So there is a problem for this uh, distribution coefficient. Uh, I don't want to go into many details. So let's, let us look at this. Uh, this distribution coefficient. Well, uh, it, it, looks, it looks like that. If I, if I take, for instance, a stratified system and I change the thermal conductivity ratio, it looks something like that. If k sigma over k beta goes to infinity, the distribution coefficient goes to zero. And the distribution coefficient, in my definition, where is the equation? Uh, it's here. Now, uh, if C is equal to 1, everything goes in the beta phase. And if C is equal to 0, everything goes in the sigma phase. It's just a uh, definition. <coughs> so if k sigma over k beta tends to infinity, C is equal to 0, all the heat is in the sigma phase. Well, that's the engineering practice. Uh, so if you are uh, in this situation, the engineering practice is okay. And it turns out that most of the applications are with, uh, with metals. Uh, so a huge difference between k sigma and k beta. So it's, also, it's, it's okay. But it's not okay all the time. On the opposite, of course, the, uh, the heat is distributed on, on, the, on, the, on the beta phase. Uh, there are additional things. Uh, uh, once again, because of periodicity condition, there is a little influence. Uh, of the of the of the Peclet number, and of course you can calculate that for uh, complex materials. Uh, take uh, <coughs> X-ray tomography images, but you, you basically has, uh, have always the same the same solution. And let us uh, take an example of application. I have a stagnant uh, uh, system, and then uh, I uh, so homogeneous temperature. And then I impose, uh, I introduce uh, some uh, heat at the interface. And basically, I will have the following situation. The, the temperature of both faces at the macro scale will increase. There will be a transient uh, evolution. Everything is transient. But if I look at the difference between the two macro scale temperature, then after a while, the, all the two temperature increase. But the, the difference remains, uh, remains a constant. And this difference can be predicted uh, by the, the, um, the, uh, the two equation model with this distribution coefficient. And actually, uh, the math, the math uh, gives that following result. So you have a, a difference that depends, of course, on omega. If, if there is no omega, there is no difference. And it depends 
on the uh, uh, heat capacities of the system and it depends on the distribution coefficient and the exchange term in the system there is a competition here between the heat that is exchange between the two, the two systems and you have the points here are DNS uh, predictions and the, and the curves, the red and blue curves are the, are the, the predictions so it works relatively, relatively well and something interesting you would think that the temperature is higher in the most conductive material it looks uh, I think right, the heat will go to the well, no, not necessarily. Uh, there is an example here. If I look at the port scale temperature, same <laughs> thermal, uh, thermal conductivity ratio, but with different thickness of the phases. And the trick is there. Uh, I see here, for a given, I see here the, the <coughs> average temperature, so the sigma is, is here. So I would expect that the, uh, the higher temperature is in the beta phase. Uh, this is correct if the beta phase uh, is relatively thin. Uh, I have that here, so the, the, I have a trough here. But if I increase the thickness of the beta phase, then there is uh, heat resistance in the beta phase, which overcomes the fact that it, is, uh, uh, it, it has a higher conductivity. So I, I may have a puff situation, either the highest temperature is in the is in the highest conductivity material, or it might be in the lowest in, in the lowest conductivity material, depending on the relative thickness of the two things. So, but you see that this is not a, a simple a simple problem. It's quite uh, quite involved, but you can't understand all that uh, with. Uh, uh Excuse me, uh, I, I missed what happened to the surface average of the source terms. Did you just rename it as omega? Yeah, o omega. Uh, <coughs> Uh, omega is the <coughs> yes the, 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 in this particular picture omega was a constant okay, so okay. That's, that's, that's the, 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 the most straightforward answer okay. otherwise we have the, the average the average of the circuit uh, so the, the uh, well that's the same idea uh, the, the idea that uh, uh, the, the highest temperature might not be in the phase with the highest conductivity that's the uh, most, most intricate material uh, let us take an example if I uh, add the, if omega comes from combustion then there is a coupling between the heat transfer problem and the, uh, and the, um, and the mass transport problem uh, and you, you can use uh, upscaling and see that well, it works relatively well especially if you have a small vampolar number from here you have predictions of the temperature in one of the phase uh, DNS and, and the black uh, line of the, the, the prediction. Uh, if you have a large column number, then the, the uh, uh, distribution of the heat tends to be to have a characteristic length which is small, and therefore, therefore uh, an average model has always difficulty. But you see that there are some uh, uh, applications of that. And recently, for those people interested in heat transfer, relative heat transfer in those media. A, a local monocular model was developed uh, using that uh, distribution coefficient uh, theory. So, so uh, I refer to the literature on that, but for people who are interested by non-equilibrium model with radiative heat transfer, then you, uh, there, are, uh, there are some solutions already available in the literature. Well, I believe that's, uh, that's the end. So I want, just wanted to, to, to give uh, an illustration here uh, of the uh, uh, this kind of uh, analysis. So I, I did a lot of work on, on the, uh, uh, the behavior of ablative layers for rockets. Uh, so they are made of composite materials, either carbon carbon or carbon resin. And this is a multi scale, uh, really a multi scale problem uh, for which you have uh, uh, small <laughs> fibers uh, and deposit here. And then you have, uh, so you make wires, and in between the wires you put resin or carbon, uh, and so forth, and in the end you get that, uh, that final, uh, final system. And you probably uh, understand that. The, the, the life of an ablative layer, ablative layer in a rocket is how, how much? One minute? Two minutes? So you have a change in temperature which is enormous, 2,000 degrees over a relatively thin layer. 
And so local equilibrium modeling uh, might not work. Uh, and if you have a, a, a process like that, you have, of course, of course the heat transfer, but you have the paralysis of the material, you have mechanical problems, uh, so you want to, to, to understand. So I'm uh, just illustrating using one of the, of the slides. So we work on that, there are many possibilities. Uh, to ablation also loose material? Sorry? To ablation also loose material? You may have uh, mechanical ablation also. Uh, it's, it depends on the, 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 the temperature is very high. Therefore, uh, the, the, uh, the, the materials are not brittle anymore. So there is more um, chemical ablation in most cases, at least for the mechanical ablation for those particular system. And uh, uh, so what's the uh, here? This is the temperature for the, uh, uh, so we have, uh, we have some active phase uh, that will uh, have some sort of paralysis mechanisms and we have the carbon fibers that will not have uh, any chemical reactions. And then you see that, so I'm, I'm not authorized to give numbers. But remember that we have one, two minute uh, time duration. So at the beginning, there is a strong difference. So it's, it's really non-equilibrium. And then after a while, let's say the half, half time of the, the entire process, then we reverse to a local equilibrium situation. So well, not a big deal. Well, let's look at the pressure rise in the system. Pressure rise in the system. Uh, Actually, it will depend on your thermal, the thermal model you will use. If you have an equilibrium model, this is the, uh, the, the discontinuous lines are the prediction of the pressure uh, field in the system, uh, and the continuous line is the prediction of the uh, non-equilibrium model. And you see there is there is some difference. And here, uh, so these are some. Uh, dimensionless uh, pressure, obviously it's very, very important. And so the, the mechanical stress induced, you will calculate with your equilibrium model, might be very, very different from the one calculated if you assume a non-equilibrium model. So you see there, there, are, there are many applications and there are many impacts of uh, uh, such models in, uh, in the system. And that concludes my, uh, my, my uh, lecture, which uh, I hope uh, provided uh, some information for you and uh, uh, would be useful for some of your applications. If you have any questions, I have uh, two minutes uh, before uh, rain, uh, rain to catch my plane. So. Okay. Anyway, you, you have the email address uh, of Yes, I am sent the additional material this morning. So, so yeah, we have distributed the feedback form. If you could fill that up and uh, give to Amin, so that would be great before you leave. And if you want any certificate of part.